What's going on there guys? Good morning, good afternoon to some out there. It's the Earthmaster here on this Sunday, August 28th, 2022 date. It is about 11.54 a.m. California time, so just about noon here. Latest quake shows a 1.0 earthquake on the globe, but also uh, some activity striking out around the Fiji Islands area. Noticing a, uh, a seismograph station over there picking up a earthquake down here in the Fiji area. Notice that uh, spike right here. So we'll wait to see what uh, becomes of that magnitude. Like I said, just coming in to the live seismograph stations at the moment. All right, looking at the current activity, man, quite the uptick overnight. And yesterday included, starting to get things rolling here, so to speak, on the ball when it comes to plate dynamics. A lot of movement as uh, far as the Western Pacific goes here along the Western Pacific plate. A lot of activity around Fiji as well overnight, including a couple fives out there. Uh, latest one looks to be at 1321 UTC time, so just uh, oh, about five hours or so ago, I had a pretty deep uh 564 kilometer deep 5.1 in this area and then again we do have another one coming in to the seismograph stations which will be updated here on the catalog soon um so we'll wait for that notice quite a bit of movement here along the java trench and the philippines area and up around the japan area all showing all that westward pressure movement that we're kind of looking for uh it seems like that finally kicked off yesterday uh, with some activity uh, up around the um, Izu Trench, which is within this region. That seems to have kicked off the uh, the movement and the momentum that we're seeing today. So this look at the activity first around the Philippines, where we've seen quite a few uh, four-pointers, including an upper four. Uh, that one kicking in overnight, but into the Philippine Trench. We got uh, one of those earthquakes here this morning, 4.5 at 175 kilometers deep into this area. A pretty deep subduction zone earthquake there in the Philippines region. Also around the uh, Indonesia area, seen some activity as well. Seen this uh, 4.1 come in uh, yesterday, uh, late afternoon time frame. But since then, all the westward pressure activity kind of kicking up here around the Java Trench. Uh, looking at those specific earthquakes here in the Java Trench area. Uh, got a couple fours. Um, most of them, if you look here at the depths here, are not super deep. Uh, the Java Trench is a major subduction zone and it can, uh, well, does produce uh, some mega quakes out there. Uh, but we're getting some activity pretty shallow right now, kind of up towards the surface with these fours. Uh, so we'll watch that closely. Also one back before the uh, trench area. 4.4 in the uh, northern Indian Ocean they have this set at at uh, 10 kilometers so a lot of strain in here but it doesn't seem to want to uh, uh, produce any deeper earthquakes and that could be a sign of something maybe brewing up here at the uh, upper levels the surface levels around the Java Trench not a whole lot of activity further westward uh, we haven't seen that uh, uh, you can pretty much draw an arrow it, it tends to start it seems that it tends to start down here work its way up uh, towards the west northwest around India and um, of course this uh, section of the plate here the Pacific plate kind of does the same thing works its way towards the west uh, northwest direction but we haven't seen any further uh, momentum of the pressure activity here around India throughout the Middle East or the uh, Mediterranean area yet um, yes there is earthquake activity we'll go ahead and check out the EMSC model real quick standby for a second and we will see some of the micro microquakes that the usgs does not mention here uh there's the earthquake just coming into the fiji islands region it's a 4.5 according to the emsc uh usgs i don't believe has that up yet nope but they should it takes them a little while but eventually they do get around to it uh, so activity still continuing here around fiji uh, as we zoom in here to the, the uh this side of the map we can kind of see some of these smaller quakes here uh, in the Java Trench area. And there's quite a few threes and twos in that mix as well. But notice we're missing this little gap area around the Himalayas, northern India. Um, there is some smaller activity across this region here. Uh, but so far, nothing large scale. 
Uh, but I think we're still kind of waiting for that little push of earthquake activity, that momentum, so to speak, around the India area. Uh, again, nothing showing up here on the USGS map. One earthquake way, way, way down here in the uh, South Africa region, a 3.1. Kicking off here, um, this one coming in, it looks like late afternoon time frame yesterday. Uh, no further activity in that region. Puerto Rico area, got uh, a little activity looks like within the last hour, just off the northwestern portion around the Mona Passage area, a 3.2. Again, that's within the last hour. Uh, look at the all magnitudes map here. Doesn't show too much uh, earthquake activity. This is very typical um, in this region here. Stand by for a second. I just got a, a notification that there was another 5.5 uh, in the Fiji area currently. So either they've upgraded. There it is. There's that 5.5. So it was a little bit bigger. It uh, looks like there may have been two earthquakes within that region. But uh, um, the 5.5 is the one that's coming in on the live seismograph stations there. Looks like there was a, uh, yeah, a little, about a, yeah, what do we got? About 10 minute difference there between those two earthquakes. So uh, things definitely rocking and rolling out there right now uh, in the Fiji area. Let me check the USGS here real quick. Nothing coming in on either of those two earthquakes yet. Got a 4.5 and also a, uh, um, a 5.5 coming in 4.5 and 5.5 so all right uh, let's get back here to the uh, USGS map here and look at the activity along the South America region about Ecuador south into Chile seeing quite a bit of uptick along the Peru Chile trench although this activity not super deep a lot of times we can get these down there a couple hundred kilometers into the subduction zone the deepest one so far uh, within the last 24 hours is a, a 4.6 at only uh, about 99 kilometers down there. Uh, western coast here of the states start up here in the Pacific Northwest getting a trail of activity across uh, this Pacific fault system here. Kind of runs over to the Victoria area. I believe this is the Devil's uh, Mountain Vault. Let me double check here and see. Can't get the... Uh, can't get the little viewer to pop up here as far as the specific fault systems go. Uh, we'll check back on that in a little bit, but I think that's the, uh, if I remember right, the Devil's Mountain Fault that kind of runs through there. Uh, and it is capable of definitely producing a pretty large earthquake, uh, and it does run into the Victoria area, pretty populated region up there. Uh, but for now, it's some microquake activity kicking off there. Uh, not a whole lot going on throughout the Cascades or the volcanoes there in the state of Washington. One earthquake outside of Bend. Uh, it's kind of weird. They got it registered at a zero, so not for sure what's up with that. Northern California, pretty spotty. Not a whole lot here. North of Sacramento, aside from the typical uh, Clear Lake volcanic field activity there with the uh, energy um, solutions there from Calpine. As uh, far as the Bay Area goes, uh, from that 3.3 that or 3.0 that we seen yesterday, haven't really seen too much in terms of aftershock activity. Um, got a 0.7 and a 1.1 following that movement there outside of the San Jose area yesterday. Some uh, movement continuing along the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. Got one one earthquake off the coast or on the coast here. It kind of looks like uh, on near the San Simon. Simeon, oh, that's one of those words there that uh, someone's going to correct me on. Again, I'm not for sure which fault system this one is here, uh, but it is a pretty lengthy fault, uh, coastal fault that the 1.6 uh, struck on uh, overnight. Ridgecrest area, not a whole lot going on up here north of the Garlock Fault shear zone. Just a couple of small microquakes. And uh, looking down south here, it looks uh, a little spotty. And this kind of goes hand in hand here with the uh, activity that we're seeing well westward and getting a lot of pressure moving westward here with the Pacific Plate. What did that do to Yellowstone? Well, let's go ahead and check it out. Let me go over here to Yellowstone real quick, see if we got any relief of the swarming, which uh, currently doesn't look like it. Uh, overnight, we still got uh, quite a few earthquakes there at Yellowstone National Park. This is day number four of the earthquake swarm. And I don't see any threes on the map here. 
Uh, these are mostly 2.0 and, and below. Uh, and there's quite a few microquakes as well. But uh, yeah, just still continuing with the swarm. These things kind of come and go. Uh, but right now it's uh, day four. Looks like it could be a lengthy fault or a lengthy um, earthquake swarm here at Yellowstone. Again, it's confined here mostly to the uh, Holmes Hill area. Uh, looks like that's about the epicenter region for the uh, ongoing earthquake swarm, which sits outside of the Yellowstone caldera. That's going to be the black line here, kind of in a uh, oval or cir circular shape. I mean, it's not really a circle, but uh, you get it in this fashion here where the black line is drawn. That shows the Yellowstone caldera. So it sits just north of there. Uh, GPS stations. We forgot to check GPS the other night at the Yellowstone area, but we'll go ahead and check that right now and uh, see what we got up there around the northwestern corner of the park. Around this area, let's see where we're at. Um, Yellowstone National Park. Here's Lake Yellowstone. So kind of the area of interest is within this region up here around Highway 89, it looks like. And this map doesn't really go to 2022. Um, so it's kind of hard to tell exactly uh, the area that we're uh, looking at. Kind of go got to go to a different area, I guess. We'll check out... Uh, did we check this one out yet? No, we didn't. So this is the GPS stations that monitor movement and um, eastward movement, northward movement up here. And the uplift here is kind of what we watch for in volcanoes. Now, I'm not for sure what happened here. This looks like a sudden drop, but it looks as though it's kind of on a cycle here. Maybe every, uh, looks like maybe every 10 years or so, we get this little drop in the, in the, uh, in the data. Now, not for certain if that's just adjustment, some maintenance on the GPS station or not. So therefore, I, I don't count this as 100% accurate. I kind of go uh, for a different um, station within the vicinity uh, to verify if that's happening there as well. Um, so West Yellowstone, did we check this one out here? Let me see here, 2020, that one's kind of an older one as well. I'll go down the road a little bit. Uh, not not too accurate there. 2022, here we go. Um, so vertical uplift. This is kind of odd here on this station. Um, it's kind of back in 2016 shows that vertical uplift. And there's some kind of adjustment here with the data. I'm not for sure what that is. Uh, but there was definitely some uplift around 2015 and uh, kind of leveled off into 2022 where it looks like we're kind of stationary. There's so many GPS stations out here, folks, that, um, you know, some of these are kind of in a valley. Some are kind of up on a mountain. Uh, let's see what we got here. That's 2020. Oh, goodness, there's just so many of them. Maybe up over here. Let's see what we got here. This area showed a gradual in, uh, uplift, not a huge one. This, these are in MMs, and that's very small adjustment. But it does show that steady rate of um, uplift. No sudden changes that I note across any of the seismograph stations um, that would have anything to do with this ongoing earthquake swarm. 2022. Uh, 2008, I remember that. We had that... Um, pretty good increase here around the caldera area a little bit of fear mongering was going on around 2008 2009 time frame uh, but since then it's died off and it goes through these little cycles here of a uh, little a little bit of vertical uplift and then downtrend and it kind of looks like we're towards the end of that downtrend but um, going back here not for certain how far this data goes back it only goes 2006 but could maybe see an uptrend here if cycles are correct and they follow one another. But uh, I don't see anything odd going on aside from the typical occasional swarms that we get here at Yellowstone right now. So and I don't see any magma movement. Those are all microquakes, probably fault stressed um, right now. And nothing shown up here on the map. Of course, uh, over the weekend, I believe these guys have a 2.5 threshold. Uh, to be reached uh, as far as putting out preliminary earthquake data here at Yellowstone uh, that gets published to the catalog here that we see on the map. 
So we'll see what they do Monday morning, right? See if they get in gear and post all those microquakes that's been going on. All right, uh, let's see. Texas, Oklahoma, not a whole lot going on here, folks. Even though we got the swarm going on, the rest of the country is awfully quiet. Um, let's see, Alaska. There's the, okay, finally they're putting it up on the map here, 5.6. A little bit of upgrade from the USGS. 5.6 coming in to the Tonga area. This one, 221 kilometers deep. That's a couple deep earthquakes we've seen here in the past 24 hours. Hawaii. Let's go to Hawaii real quick, then we'll check out Alaska. Most of the activity confined to the Pahala area. No uh, major adjustments going on. Looks like the largest quakes, a 3.2 and a 2.7 across the big island uh, up here in uh, Alaska. As far as the swarming goes around this volcano, the um, Trident Volcano is still swarming uh, over the last 24 hours. The last seven days of activity kind of brings up this tally to uh, 122 earthquakes or so within this area of this volcano, which still sits at a green level. I'm um, going to have to see if I can get a seismograph station of this area uh, as far as data goes. I'm not, I'm not finding it once I go to the uh, volcano hazards map. I'll show you guys here real quick. We'll see if uh, we'll see if the uh, AVO puts out a little statement in regards to that swarming there because it's any kind of swarming at a volcano is uh, something at least noteworthy to uh, mention. Here's the uh, Trident Volcano there in Alaska. Color code green, alert level normal. But I wouldn't be surprised if this swarm continues uh, that it kind of gets upgraded, possibly, uh, because it is happening right there at the volcano. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, last eruption, 1953. Far as data goes, um, a bunch of references cited. see what we got here not showing a whole lot of eruptions but uh, I'm gonna have to look around for the data on here I'm sure I can find it I just don't want to spend a lot of time on here I haven't really checked out this uh, volcano I just happened to see the swarming activity here uh, confined to this region of the trident volcano and um, it's uh, definitely noteworthy to uh, probably keep an eye on it uh, let me check the last 30 days of activity, see if this has been ongoing for any longer than that. Uh, let's see, what do we have? 122. So zoom into this area. 141 uh, compared to the 113, 122 within this area. So it's pretty recent as far as in the last week or so uh, with the swarming activity continuing there at the volcano. And again, this is the last... 24 hours and we still got a pretty good cluster of quakes specifically right around that volcano uh, nothing big so far uh, the last seven days of 2.5 and above doesn't show anything above 2.5 it's all microquakes but man if we are seeing this type of swarm at uh, uh, Yellowstone or, or not Yellowstone but uh, Mount Shasta Mount Lassen somewhere uh, I think they would put out an article about it so we'll see um, if Monday comes around and if they don't uh, maybe put out an article, I'll give them an email. See if they uh, can tell me a little bit about uh, what's going on up there at the uh, volcano in Alaska. All the other volcanoes are pretty uh, typical. Not a whole lot of renewed activity there at Tall Volcano. I believe we're still just seeing that earthquake swarm in the Samoa Islands, uh, American Samoa region. I don't believe we've had any uh, changes, but uh, we'll go check it out here real quick. Stand by for a second here. View data. And uh, I do like to check out the live data on this volcano just to uh, just to see what's going on. And it looks about, eh, it kind of looks about the same as yesterday. So it's been ongoing now for a couple weeks with this earthquake swarm. Uh, just been kind of a continual thing. I don't see any large quakes in the mix here. Most of them below the 2.5, it looks like on the scale so uh we'll see how this uh see how this plays out either way things getting active in the uh, earthquake department solar weather department folks man that's another one we are popping with m flares overnight as well let's go ahead and check out the latest data here from the solar ham site uh, are looking at a pretty long duration m flare currently 
Notice that these two large M flares really spiking out. Uh, we did see, um, I believe that peaked in the M6 range. Let me see what we got. I don't know if these guys are even keeping up. I'm not even joking. Uh, we probably had well over 10, uh, 10 to 12 M flares in the last three days or so. And uh, this one here looks like a pretty good a pretty good event kicking off here. We do have a 25% chance of an X flare popping off. Protons from the sun have leveled off. Uh, they were pretty elevated yesterday evening and overnight, uh, but notice that has dropped. And also the DRAP map shows that the proton um, um, map here, you would basically see the polar regions being enhanced with the uh, absorption here, the highest frequency uh, blackout radio bla radio blackout so to speak would be uh, lit up in red like it was last night so the protons have died off right now what we're dealing with is the flare activity and look at that baby holy smokes that thing is sparking like a look at that thing that is huge that thing could blast off an x flare i'm not even joking uh, we'll watch that pretty closely that is awesome looking i'm not even gonna lie so this was from last night. Notice the protons kicking up there when there was 100% certainty. I'm going to refresh this map and uh, take a look at this giant flare that's popping off here. It's like a huge matchstick right now, just flaring like crazy. Uh, and of course, that's coming from the bad boy 3088, which is departing. I, I'm guessing it's kind of its way of saying goodbye so long. Maybe we'll see you around the next rotation. Who knows? But this thing popped off more than these three uh, M flares. Those are just noteworthy events. I wouldn't doubt it if this thing sends off an X flare here very, very soon. There's a 20% chance of it. It does harbor a, uh, a beta gamma class field. Um, man, that thing is just, uh, it's been a while since I've seen something like that. Uh, a couple other sunspots that we got to watch and monitor. It's going to be uh, 3086. All these sunspots right here. Uh, not as strong as set up and set up as this one. But uh, this bad boy right here, kind of kind of getting a lot of intermixing here. We just need a little bit of growth from these magnetic fields. But they are pretty uh, dynamic. Uh, and I believe, let me check, 3089 has a... Uh, uh, right now it's just got a beta magnetic class field. But uh, there is still quite a bit of mixing in there of the uh, magnetic fields. It does have a 10% chance of an X-flare itself. But, uh, man, that's just... Uh, amazing to look at folks I'm not even joking look at that beautiful absolutely stunning and beautiful so watch for an X flare with this type of activity if it's gonna do it it's gonna do it soon let's see here I'm gonna keep that up I gotta get a screenshot of that that's pretty awesome to see so right now still kind of peeking out um, with those long duration M flares and um, I'll see if I can't get a total tally count of the M flares that we've had. Because uh, I've got to remember here, this is just not one long M flare. There's many M flares within the shadow of the main M flare. Notice these little spikes here. Uh, probably a good four or five of them just on that day. And then we've had a couple more over the course of the last 24 hours. And then not to mention uh, the last hour or so. With that bad boy. So we'll... Uh, We'll send 3080, 3088 on its way, right? It, it is kind of waving goodbye. And, uh, man, that thing is beautiful. Not joking. I might even make that my, uh, I may, might make that my wallpaper. It's pretty cool to look at. So, uh, overall activity looks like 99% chance C flare, 55% chance of an M flare. We're almost continuously cracking with M flares. 25% uh, overall probability of X flares and we still remain a little bit elevated for some proton events But right now it is kind of dwindling down uh, Chance of the auroras tonight at the higher latitudes that includes Canada uh, Looks like a G1 class storm uh, possibly forecasted here over the next couple nights and uh, Man getting crazy. Let's bring on the X flares all right, guys, we will be back a little bit later, of course, unless something major happens here. Uh, till then, take care, and we will talk at you guys a little bit later tonight. Peace out, everyone.